Welcome to the End Time Sanctuary Present Truth Ministries. Our topic today is very interesting one. The unfailing divine teachers in understanding and keeping biblical truth. Let me ask you some serious questions with eternal consequences. Genuine teachers of God's truth are always in demand and needed since sin invaded our world, much more now in the end time. We have a high right to honor and respect to the competent and respected human teachers to teach, to guide, to help us interpret and understanding the truths in the Bible other than our personal responsibility. My question is, do human teachers are enough or sufficient to teach, to guide us, and to help us interpreting and understanding the spiritual and eternal truths found in the Bible? How safe and sure are we of what they teach, what we hear, what we know and understand from their messages that they have imparted? Are they really truth? I'm just asking question. The biblical truth is that God has an enemy, Satan and his angels that are ready to cast doubts, questions, the trustworthiness of God's word. He has power, although limited but dangerous. He is able to blind, to deceive, to twist the truth, and to lead us into destruction. We are helpless without divine powers to counteract his work. So the question, does our human strength of understanding and knowledge reliable enough against these supernatural enemies? Does the Bible provide truths that we are ever in need of more divine teachers to teach, guide, and help us to interpret and understand God's eternal truth? truths beside human teachers? This and other related questions are the substance of our topic under discussion today. So from the beginning, God personally communicates the words of truth to Adam and Eve in Eden. So with the holy angels according to Genesis 3 verses 9 to 24. After the fall of man, still God personally spoke the truth. We find that in Genesis 12, verses 1 and 2. Through angels, through visions, dreams, Holy Spirit, the prophets. And it includes nature and God-created works. These are the agencies of communication, of revelation of himself about him and his words of truth. God, who at various times and in different ways spoke in time past to our fathers, that is the patriarchs, in the prophets, but has in this last day spoke to us by his hand. Hebrews verses 1 and 2. All these are still needed and relevant today. Meaning to say, we need the instrument of God of communicating his word, his will, and purposes. We need angels. We need still the vision and dreams, the Holy Spirit, nature created, besides all human agencies. So, in the Old Testament, God appoints teacher for his people. In Exodus, God selected Moses, the highest above all teachers, and he said, teach them to his decrees and instruction, and show them the way they are to live, and how they are to behave. Exodus 18.20. But Moses need others to help him. The teachers of God word or truth have some divine standard qualification. So God used Jitro and told Moses the quality selection. You shall teach them statutes and laws. Show them the way in which they must walk, the work that they must do. Moreover, you shall select from all people, evil men, such as fear of God, men of truth, hating covetousness, Place such over them to rollers of thousands, rollers of hundreds, rollers of fifties, and rollers of tens. 
Exodus 18 verses 20 and 21. These four qualifications are God's standards of helping in knowing God. This was the criteria and process of communicating God's word. Even God is directing himself through his appointed teachers and leaders during theocracy until the time of Joshua. And so, Moses to Joshua. When Israelites arrived at the border of Canaan, Moses recounted before the people that God declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to follow, and then wrote them on the two stone tablet. And the Lord directed me at the time to teach you the decrees, the laws you are to follow in the land that you are crossing Jordan to possess. Deuteronomy 4, 13 and 14. Let us remember that God made Israel as a holy nation, a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19, 5 and 6. The priests and prophets were given the privilege and responsibility of instruction of the word of God, beginning with Moses and after him, Joshua. So God spoke to kings and others, but the prominent were the prophets and the priests of the word of God. So Malachi 2, 7 says, for the lips of the priest should keep knowledge, and people should seek the law from his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So we understand there are human agents. However, in the Old Testament, we find a radical changes of those handling and preserving God's word. By sin and corruption, abound false teachers like prophets and priests emerge. You find this in Deuteronomy 18.20, Ezekiel 39, Jeremiah 14.14, 14, and Jeremiah 23.16. Many of the priests lost grip on God's word. The priests did not say, where is the Lord? And those who handled the law did not know me. The ruler transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied Baal and walked after things that did not profit. Jeremiah 2.8. And in fact, general people. They and their kings, their princes, their priests, their prophets, saying to a tree, you are my father, to a stone, you give birth for me. Jeremiah 26. Did you understand that? There is a total corruption from leadership, from kings, princes, priests, prophets, saying to a tree, you are a father. This is idolatry. An astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. Prophets, prophesize falsely and priests ruled by their own power and my people love to have it so. This is total spiritual darkness. How can we have the truth, God's word, when prophets, priests, and people like what the prophets and the priests, the kings and the princes have done? This is a chaos. The priests and the prophets who were in charge of God's word rejected God's word. God challenges the apostatized prophets and priests in Jeremiah's time to learn from the birds. Even the stork in the heavens know her appointed times. The turtle dove, the swift, the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. Jeremiah 8 7. They have rejected the word of the Lord because. From the least to the greatest, even is given to covetousness from prophet, even priest. Everyone deals falsely. Jeremiah 6, 13, 8, 9, and 10. If ruler, priest, prophets, and elder rejected God's word, then the strong negative impact influenced the mind and the attitudes of people towards God's word. The question then is, who teaches the people of God? word at that particular time. It is God who appointed hosts of divine agencies, the ministering holy angels, for they are ministers of him who do his pleasures as teachers. Psalms 103, 19 and 20. Meaning to say, when there is a total chaos from top to bottom, who are in charge in understanding the truth, God's word, God will use his ministers who do his pleasure and his will and they are called 
ministers of Him, and they are the angels, they are the teachers. So, from rulers to people would not listen. There was a time. God complained for all who become perverted teacher. It is because of all evil, the children of Israel and the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger. They, their kings, their princes, their priests, their prophets, the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they have turned their back to me and not their face. Though I taught them, teaching again and again, they would not listen and receive my instruction. Jeremiah 32, 33. This is an apex of unbelief and rebellion. So the prophet and the priest who were handling God's word, but many times lost direction due to their sin. Yes, both the prophets and the priests go about in the land they do not know. Jeremiah 14, 18. The priests and the prophets and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness. Jeremiah 13, that what would you expect from such teacher? And these experiences are repeated until the end of time. The false teachers persecuted and wanted to kill the true teachers of God because they have their own raper teachers and prophets that they are appointed to their own so that they will not speak against them. Listen to Jeremiah 26, 23, 13. For both the prophets and the priests are profane. Yes, my house, I found their wickedness, says the Lord. Once more, the priests and the prophets and all people see him saying, you will surely die. Jeremiah 26, 8. Again, when the princes of Judah hear this thing, once more the priest and the prophet spoke to the princes and all the people saying, this man deserves to die. Jeremiah 26, 11. Just imagine, Jeremiah was the lone. That's why he was a crying prophet. He was thrown to the dungeon many times. He was attempted to be killed. Why? They don't want to listen to the word of God. They want to prepare their own self-appointed prophets and priests. And they give instruction. This is the words you are going to do. It is because king, princes, rulers, and prophets, and priests prepared to hear the words of their self-appointed prophet, not the prophet of the Lord like Hananiah, Simeniah, and many others. This is what happened. I'm just making a summary. Before, they were taken to Babylon. Let's go to the New Testament. We need to understand that the church has been gifted. It is clear from scripture teaching is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophecy in accordance to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If teaching, then teach. Romans 12, 6. And God has placed in the church first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing of helping, of guidance, of different kinds of tongues. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4 11 to 13. It is true. Other could teach, but teachers and pastors are specifically designated teacher according to the gift of the church in the New Testament. Supposed to be all church members are teacher in a different area of church life. Teaching, encouraging, supporting one another. But we like to do our own things than the things of God. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs, from spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. That's what Paul says in Colossians 3.16. Most churches fail on this because everybody is busy with temporary needs of life, no enough time for spiritual things. 
result, it so course to just maintenance spiritual life. Powerless life against deception and the wiles of the devil. In fact, it is recorded in sacred history of God's people, teaching us a lesson to generation after generation. The challenge of reading history of the past people of God, that we may remedy our defect and our spiritual deficiency. Paul says in Romans 15, 4, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us Whatever is written before, it has a lesson today. So the true endurance taught in scripture and encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So it's very important. What are other means of teaching? He decreased teachers for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded to our ancestor to teach their children. Psalm 78.5 I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate your statues. Psalm 190. So, David has a teachers. Our ancestors, they have their own their teachers. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. That's the instruction, Galatians 6. In everything, set an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, your integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose, you may be a sin because they have nothing bad to say about us. Titus 2, 7 and 8. A repeated principle from the Old Testament teacher's qualification. We discussed that. And so, the challenge today the believer's challenge today, whatever we hear from preachers, teachers, evangelists, we need to reinvestigate or reevaluate the authenticity of their message, not just merely accept and swallow them without further verification, just like what I do. You check. That's why I have this word in front of me so that you can follow up. Where did I get? So that you can verify, reinvestigate, reevaluate. To double check, is this is not to discredit them or question them, but to double check because all are bound to commit mistakes and sometimes serious mistakes in interpretation and understanding the Bible. At least when there are errors, are not detrimental to the soul and damaging to our faith and bring us a wreckage of destruction. Jesus' word is always relevant. Search the scripture. John 5, 39. Let us have a Berean believer's mindset. Who are the Bereans? According to Acts 17, 11, these were fair-minded, or other version, open-minded, than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness, and search the scripture daily to find out whether these things were so. That's what I wanted in this presentation. Do not accept what your pastor is telling. You see, amen, amen, amen. Is that really true when you see amen? You have to reevaluate the authenticity of the message. Have a very in mind. Accept with readiness, but search. To find out whether this is correct or not. Because teachers today has a big problem. Bias, prejudice, ignorance. Plus the sinfulness which destroy the holiness and the sacredness of God's word. Remember always that God has a dreadful enemy of soul. Paul warns, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. The wiles, the Greek word is methodia, the wiles, the methods of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers, the darkness of the sin, against spiritual hosts of the wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor that you may be able to withstand in an able day, having done all to stand. Ephesians 6.11. Just imagine. You have your own PhD degree, master's degree. But 
Who are you against these principalities, against power, rulers of the darkness, against spiritual hosts? They are our unseen enemies. Only the power of Christ and the illumination and the revelation of understanding God's truth that is from heaven through the Holy Spirit and His angels would make us sure. That's why we need to take the whole armor. Not our own knowledge. Our understanding. Because they are not always safe. The best standard is the word of God. What are Satan works and his angels to Christ's followers? There are so many. Innumerable, among others, mentioned in the Bible, which are subtle, for they are deceitful spirit. 1 Timothy 4.1 And deceives the entire world. Revelation 12.9 They are capable of blinding the mind. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 They take away the word of God in our hearts. Mark 14.4 14 and Luke 18.12 It will lead us to disobedience. Ephesians 2.8 They hinder God's work. 1 Thessalonians 2, 18, lead us to unrighteous life. 1 John 3, 18, and there are so many other things. So we need really unfailing divine assistance. Let us not trust with our own knowledge and wisdom because we need somebody to guide us. Satan works against Jesus' followers. The enemy of the world, souls works temptations, entice leaders to sin. Take 1 Chronicles 21.1. Accuse Christ's followers before God of their sin. Zechariah 3.1, Revelation 2.10. They are the sources of all kinds of evil things. Matthew 19.13. Take position of human body and torment. 2 Corinthians 12.7. Make people sick. Luke 9.42, deceived to violate God's command, Ephesians 2.2, 2. hinder God's work, blinds the mind. My brothers and sisters, Ellen White has a number of reference of the works of the devil. The great controversy, the snares, 518-530. Look at also the Pachek and Prophets, the first deception, uh, the same, great controversy, 531-550. Can our dead speak? In Patrick and Prophets, why is sin permitted? The stimulus to minister, worldly policy, a snare of Satan, the sorrow of ages, and the story of redemption. Unless you study them, the wiles of the devil and his methods, we are his easy prey. So, we are not saved. Because if Satan has his millions and millions of angels, we need the same power from God who will help us understand. So we need a constant need of divine teachers. For this reason, we need more than human teacher every day to help us. To teach, to guide, to lead, to instruct, interpret, to empower, transform our understanding of truth in the way of righteousness. Our enemy is faceless. Our work is according to James. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Or Paul insists, do not give place to the devil. Ephesians 4.27 Do not present your members to sin as instrument of righteousness. Unrighteousness. But present yourself to God to those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as an instrument of righteousness. Paul says it's better to suffer doing good than if that should be God's will than for doing evil. 1 Peter 3.17 So, we know that there is an unqualified deteriorating teachers. There are many times that deteriorating spiritual teachers of God's people in the Old Testament resulting to produce deteriorating spirituality. In the New Testament, Paul says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again. The first principle of the oracles of God. What happened? Their people 
supposed to be professors, but now sitting in the desk, in the chair, as a student. What a deterioration. That's why Paul says, by this time, you ought to be teacher. You need someone to teach you again for the first principle. You have come to need of milk, not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who reason use their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. So, Paul challenges them to go up. Therefore, let us move beyond elementary teaching about Christ and taken forward to maturity. Just imagine, they are already college and went back as elementary. There's incredible deterioration. So we need to understand our need. If you understand what Joel, this, what he says, locos. Hear you elders, give ears, you inhabitants of the land. Anything happen in your days or even in the days of your father, tell your children. Let it be your children to your children or children. Meaning to say, fourth generation. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. Joel chapter 1 verses these verses explain that every generation, there is a way of deterioration or degradation or negating of teaching the truth. If it is added, there is no problem. But this is subtraction. So, what happened to us? This is the reality of rim of religious world. It is because wickedness and sinfulness escalate to a highest level. So divine assistance, the angels and other divine agencies are urgently needed in understanding and preserving the truth necessary for our salvation. Yet we find the intrusion of unqualified and false teachers. There were even unqualified teachers. For they do not know what about the thought. This is what Paul is saying. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about, what they are confidently affirm. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebel, the ungodly and the sinful, the unholy and the irreligious for those who kill fathers and mothers. They twist this one. But this is the problem. False teachers abound and brought confusion. Conflict and contention and division among believers. As we read in Acts 28.30, 1 John 3.4, verses 1 to 4, and 2 Peter 2, verses 1 to 3. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. No wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his minister also transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. This is what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. Meaning to say, there are a lot of problems. But there are also good students. Because, number one, we have the Bible who will teach us. Because the Holy Spirit guides us. So, we are expected to be a quality and progressive student of God's Word. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser. Teach righteously and they will add to the learning. Proverbs 9.9. 9. It means continually growing, progress developing Christ like character by learning and living a righteous life. We must also select qualified teachers to teach us God's truth. It is crucial since this profession and calling had a stricter standard in judgment. Not just anybody. He says, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we will receive a stricter judgment. Paul states the qualification, able to teach, not merely teaching. So, we, then we need to understand that. God desires us to be saved. So what is our personal response to this offer? We should, by all means, cooperate and obey His desire for our good. 
for this is the good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. 1 Timothy 2 and 4. So we need saving knowledge. It means we need all God's agency to assist us in our battle. Look to me and be saved, all ends of the earth, for I am God and there's no other. Isaiah 45, 22. We should be like Peter, shouting, Lord, save me. Matthew 14, 30. But ours is always, or like the disciples together, they shouted, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Matthew 8, 25. Our attitude should be, help us, Lord, as repeatedly used in Psalm 22, 19, 38, 22, 40, 13, 60, 11, 70, verses 1 and 5, 71 and 12. We always cry to the Lord, help us, O Lord, to understand, guide us, correct us in the way how we understand and apply your word. We are not saved. Request to be taught of God. We have ministers, Bible teachers that teach us, but this is not enough for they are fallible and erring. We need God to teach us. Various people of God in the Old Testament says, teach me to do your will. You are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on the level ground. Psalms 143.10. So, we need God to teach us personally. Not necessarily, because the teacher, they have their part, they have their role. But the final refining analysis, correction, perfection of what we understand, we need teach me. Oh God, teach me. Again, in Psalm 25, 4 and 5, make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. God is our teacher. Lead me into your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, for I wait all day. Again, Psalm 27, 11, teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in the level path because of my fault. Here is our need, our urgent need. Yes, we read the Bible. Yes, we pray. Yes, we have teachers. But more than that, we need the unfailing divine teachers to teach, to guide us into God's Word. The Holy Spirit teaches as promised to us by Jesus is the security and authentic understanding of God's truth. John 16, 13. We have forgotten this privilege and we made heavy trust on human talent. We need to continue request. The only safety for us is to ask God that His Holy Spirit will enlighten and empower us to stay and believe God's word. Again, Psalms 86, 11. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear of your name. Teach me good discernment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Psalm 119.66. Let me hear you, your loving kindness in the morning, for I trust in you. Teach me the way which should I walk. For you lift up my soul. Psalms 140. Teach me what I do not see, for I have done iniquity. I will not do it again. Job 34.32. We have such a kind of attitude that we are sure enough that we are walking with God and staying in the path of righteousness. God is our number one teacher. Our pastors, our minister and teacher, secondary. Listen to what Ellen White says in Christ of Zeke Lights in 410, 411. Without the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, men will not be able to distinguish from error. They will fall under the temptation of Satan. That's a powerful statement. We need the Holy Spirit instruction every day to guide us to save what we believe. So Paul says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproach, for correction, 
for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 1 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. God and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. Let's look at that. We forgot. Sometimes we only believe what the pastor says. I'm not saying we are going to discredit what I say at the beginning. Let us reinvestigate, reevaluate like a brilliant mind whether it's true because there is a higher teacher that demand our attention. That is God. It's our personal teacher because we belong to him and his word belongs to him. And because of sin, we are affected. So we need to understand. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Psalm 32 8. He leads the humble in justice. He teaches the humble his way. Psalm 25 9. Please receive instruction from my mouth and establish your words in my heart. Job says 22 22. Even genuine prophet Elisha on occasion holds the messages for them. The Lord has eaten it from me and has not told me. 2 Kings 4.27 So there was a woman who was coming and Elijah did not know and he told his servant to inquire because he said, the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. You just imagine that even prophet has that. That should be our attitude. That's how we conceive. Look at prophet Daniel. Daniel as a prophet prayed for understanding and holy angel helped him. When I, Daniel, had seen a vision, I sought to understand it. And behold, standing before me was one look like a man, Daniel 8, 15. He was an ordinary prophet, yet he needed someone higher than him. Let me repeat that. He was not an ordinary prophet. He solved the mystery and all the problems of the king of Babylon because God teaches him. But this time, he asks for understanding. Then he said to me, do not be afraid, Daniel. For from the first day, you set your heart to an understanding. This and on humbling yourself before God. Your words were heard. I have come in response to your word. I have heard the voice of man between the banks of Uli. And he called me He said, Gabriel, give this man understanding of the vision. And God sent angel to teach him, what about us ordinary readers of God's word? And their hearts may be encouraged, having knit together in love, attaining all the wealth that comes, the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself, Colossians 2. We need divine teachers. Let us not trust ourselves because we are educated, because we finish Master Theology, Doctor of Theology. It's not. Because the Bible says we need higher teachers that is called divine teachers. God himself and his angels. Let's look at this continually. So we need to request understanding from God. Right? A seeker of God's truth, we need to understand from God, His Holy Spirit. May enlighten our mind. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. Psalm 119, 125. Let me cry, come to you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Psalm 119, 169. Make me understand the way of your precept so that I will meditate your wonders. Psalm 119, 27. Give me understanding that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. 119.34 Your hands made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Did you understand that? That the biblical, the psalmist, are really saying, teach us, O Lord. Help us. You guide us. Give us understanding. This is what I say. The unfailing divine teacher is the most urgent we need in the end time because we cannot trust our instinct, ourself. The standard is the Bible, but remember we have an enemy. The power of divine understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
a good understanding, have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Psalm 111.10. Lawbreakers have difficulty in understanding the holy words of God. And so the psalmist says, I understand more than the ancient because I keep your prison. 119.100. Unless God through his Holy Spirit open our spiritual eyes, we cannot see and understand God's word. That's why Jesus with his disciples three and a half after resurrection, here is the testimony. Luke 24, 45. Jesus opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scripture. Unless God will open our mind, we cannot understand or comprehend the scripture. So our prayer would always be like the psalmist, 119, 18. Open my eyes that I may behold the wondrous thing, wonderful things from your law. And we know that the Son of God has come. He has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And who, are a, who is true is the Son, Jesus Christ. This is true God and eternal life. 1 John 5, 20. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believe in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 31 and 32. So, God himself teaches the truth. The great truth, that is the word of God, claims that God himself teaches his people the words of truth, the way of life. Yet many overlook, neglected, and forgotten this truth. The result is error, ignorance of divine things. This is a dangerous adventure. We are exposed to the blinding influence of evil angels. We always need divine teacher of God, even God himself. Look at this Isaiah 54, 13. And your sons will be taught of the Lord. And the well-being of your sons will be great. When God teaches us personally, something greater happens. I will instruct you and teach you all the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eyes. Psalm 32, 8. If your sons keep my covenant and statues, I will teach them. Their sons will sit on your throne forever and ever. Psalms 1, 32, 12. So how important is it? God instructs teachers his ways and his path. The quality of instruction and teaching comes directly from God. For God, for his God, instruct and teach him properly. Isaiah 28, 6. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. Why? He may teach us about his ways and we may walk in his path. For from Zion will go forth the law, even the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Micah 4, verse 2, and Isaiah 2, 3. Thus, the Lord says, you Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. Repeated in Isaiah 48. In the book of Isaiah, this is 48, 17. He who chastens the nation... He will not rebuke, even he teaches man's knowledge. Psalm 94, 10. So, this is ensuring the surety of God's teaching. The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. That's what happens when we allow God, the Holy Spirit, and the holy angels to teach us. We need their guidance. So, who is your teacher besides human agents? You are to speak to him and put his word in his mouth. I, even I, will be in your mouth and his mouth. I will teach you what you are able to do. Exodus 14, 15. Out of heavens, he let you hear his voice to discipline you. And on earth, he let you see his great fire. You heard his word from the midst of the fire. Who is the man who fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way that he should choose. Psalm 25, 12. O God, 
You have taught me from my youth and still declare your wondrous deeds. Psalm 71-70. Did you see? It is the surety, the sureness of God's teaching, of God's word, when we have a divine teacher. Let us not trust ourselves. Let us submit all what we learn from God. And he will direct us in the way how we can fulfill. The Holy Spirit is the perfect teacher of God's truth. The third member of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, is the perfect authoritative teacher of God's truth. Jesus declared, but when the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring to you, remember, all things that I have said to you. John 14, 26. We have the best teacher. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things, all truth. This promise is for us to request and accept as a perfect and trustworthy, available anywhere, anytime, because the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12. He is omniscience, 1 Corinthians 2.10. And he is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and you will be in you, John 14, 17. What a privilege for us Christian teachers, pastors, who with all our knowledge and understanding and wisdom, we come as helpless and ask the Holy Spirit to teach us what is proper understanding and receiving the exact word of God, the truth, and we walk in truth because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And so, let us look at the passages that deals with Holy Spirit as teacher. The Holy Spirit teaches the followers of Jesus and is available in time of acute emergency and in the future crisis but when they deliver you up do not worry how what you speak for it will be given to you an hour when you speak for it is not you who speak but the spirit of your father who speak in you Matthew 10 19 and 20 but when they erase you and deliver you up do not worry beforehand premeditate what you will speak whatever is given to you on that hour speak that for it is not you who speak but the holy spirit mark 13 11 for the holy spirit will teach you that very hour what you ought to say luke 12 verse 12 this is the highest privilege and honor to have the holy spirit but this promise is always conditional our personal relationship with Christ that is not questionable, then this teacher is available to help us and to honor our request. What are the things the Holy Spirit teaches? The divine teacher teaches God's eternal truth that are needed for man to understand who God is, his character, plan, purposes, and will, his government, and what is in man. It is clear. That he teaches all things. He searches all the deep things of God. First Corinthians 2 10. That's why many people, oh, the Spirit is not God. Look at this. He teaches all things. He searches all things of God because he is God. All things is too much for a finite man to comprehend. He teaches things that are essential that we may appreciate, honor, praise, and love God. Particularly truths that are necessary for our understanding of salvation. We will look at some aspect of God's truth that the Holy Spirit has conveyed through the written word. So, the Holy Spirit reveals God and the deep things of God, especially those who have the mind of Christ. Apostle Paul asserts, but God revealed to them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So, what he's teaching? These things we also speak, not in words in man wisdom, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Unless we have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16, we cannot understand God's word. 
We might see blah, 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 and all these things, but that is not what the Holy Spirit is teaching. So, it is our privilege and honor to have the Holy Spirit as our teacher, compared to all teacher in all the academy. We love our teachers. I love my teachers in college. They help me understand. I love my teachers when I took my master's degree and when I went my PhD degree. But above all, what they teaches me, I went and give them to the Lord and say, Lord, teach me. You are the best teacher because you are the owner of your own word and then your Holy Spirit will teach all things because it churches all things of God. And we have the best teacher. We will never walk in darkness when we have so teaches us wisdom knowledge understanding guide and empowerment isaiah 11 2 verses the spirit of the lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom of understanding spirit of counsel of might spirit of knowledge and fear of the lord who has directed the spirit of the lord who has his counsel or has taught him with whom did he take counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Isaiah 40, 13 and 14. And Jesus promises, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statue and you will keep my judgment and to do them. Ezekiel 36, 27. And there is a teacher. Listen to this. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand, wherever you turn to the left, Isaiah 30. That is conscience. Conscience would always tell us what is right. But he allow us to choose for our own. So let's look at our teachers. The Holy Spirit correct our prayers. Making intercession, decision of the church. Likewise, the Spirit also help us in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself make intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Now searches the heart. He knows the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saint according to the will of God. Romans 8, 26, 27. I call it when our prayer because we do not know. To tell you frankly, I do not know how to pray. But when I pray, I see to it that what is in my heart. And then the Holy Spirit edit that in my version. And so when my prayer reaches to God, it's a perfect. So he make intercession that is for the saints, that is according to God. Acts 15, 28. For it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than necessary things. So it helps in decision making. Turn at my rebuke, surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you, Proverbs 1.23. And it had been revealed to him that by the Holy Spirit that he would not see his death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, Luke 26. Did you understand all these beautiful privileges where the Holy Spirit becomes our personal teachers? The Holy Spirit gives what the church needs. Manifestation of the Spirit is given to each for one to profit all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through Spirit, to another word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith of the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And so, we understand all this according to 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. So let's just look at the need of human teachers sometimes. All humans, we need to depend on human teachers to help, for help, guide, instruct, understand the truth. But God will assure us that you also give your good spirit to instruct them. Nehemiah 9.20 In this sense, sometimes he uses people as agents of instruction, but there are occasions this is not applicable in certain conditions. However, Apostle John asserts that Christians who receive anointing of Holy Spirit need not any teacher to teach God's truth. The Holy Spirit is sufficient enough. As for you, the anointing you receive from Him remains in you. Do you do not need anyone to teach you? 
But as his anointing teach you about all things, as anointing is sealed, not counterfeit, just as he taught you, remain in him. 1 John 2.27 But how many have been qualified for this condition today? We need really such kind of teacher. Then God carries his work in teaching us through his holy angels. Most Christians have understood that the works of holy angels are just to protect, to guard, to the people. It is equally true that many Christians do not have comprehensive knowledge and understanding of the works of the holy angels as minister spirit. We need to understand better we do in the mission of angels, it would be well to remember that every true, true tri child of God, God has a cooperation with heavenly being. Invisible armies of light and power attend the meek and the lowly ones who believe and claim the promises of God. Cherubim, seraphim, angels that excel in strength stand at God's right hand. All ministering spirit sent forth to minister for them who shall be ears of salvation. Hebrews 1 14, Acts of the Apostles 1 54. And so we have this privilege. Angels in our side, impressing our mind that we are reading the Bible correctly, interpreting it correctly. So, by angel messengers, earth is connected with heaven. All the deeds of men, whether good or evil, are open to the eye of infinite justice. Acts of the Apostles 4, 94. We have an advocate pleading in our behalf. The Holy Ghost is continually engaged in beholding our course of action. We need to know keen perception by our own practical godliness the truth may be to appear truth as in, in Jesus. The angelic agencies are messengers from heaven, actually ascending and descending, keeping earth in constant connection with heaven above. This angel's messenger are observing all our course of action. They are ready to help all the weaknesses, guarding all from moral and physical danger according to the providence of God. And whenever souls yield to the softening, subduing influence of the Spirit of God under this angel's ministration, there is joy in heaven. The Lord himself rejoice with singing. Selected Messages, Volume 1, page 96. So, holy angels are teachers. Remember in the resurrection of the Lord. Angel helps Mary and other women to remember Jesus' word, but also assist in understanding the words of Jesus. They said, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Luke 24, 6 and 7. So, meaning to say, we have God the Father, we have Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the angels, who will help us? If you come to the study of scripture in humility with earnest prayer for guidance, angels of God will open you in its living realities. The angel messenger will expel sin from the heart unless the door of the heart is padlocked and Christ is refused admission. Christ will withdraw himself from those persist refusing heavenly blessings that are so freely offered to them. Testimonies to Ministers 338. So, what is our need? Our need is cooperation. Look at carefully the book of Revelation where God's work are carried out by holy angels throughout the whole world. Angels are around about those who are willing to be taught by divine things. In the time of great necessity, they will bring remembrance, the very truths in which they are needed. Great Controversy 599. It is the office of holy heavenly angels to prepare the heart to comprehend God's work. Great Controversy, page 600. The angels of heaven are moving upon human minds to arouse investigation in the themes of the Bible. A far greater work will be done. Has yet been to be done, none of the glory of it will flow to men. For angels that ministers to those who shall be heirs of salvation are working night and day. Counsels to writers and editors, 140. 
Angels of God are to impress the word of God in the mind. Great Controversy 594. So the question is, who controls the mind? When we read the Bible, unseen beings around us. What shall we do with our helplessness? Trust ourselves? No. Listen, the spirit in which you come to investigation of the scripture will determine the character of assistant at your side. Angels from the world of light will be for those in humility of heart seek divine guidance. But if the Bible is open with irreverence, with a feeling of self-sufficiency, if the heart is filled with prejudice, Satan is beside you. He will sit the plain statement of God's word in a perverted life. Testimonies for ministers 100 or. So we must come with a humble and teachable spirit to obtain knowledge from the great I am. Otherwise, evil angels also will blind our minds, harden our hearts, that we shall not be impressed by the truth. Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, 417. The reason why we need divine teacher, Satan is constantly endeavoring to attract attention to man in the place of God. He leads us to look to bishops, to pastors, to professors of the theology as their guide instead of searching scripture to learn their duty for themselves. Then by controlling the minds of this leader, he can influence the multitudes according to his will. That's a sobering statement. Multitudes do not want Bible truth because it interferes with their desire of their sinful, word-loving heart. And Satan supply the deceptions they love. Great Controversy 519. Listen to this. The holy angels' works are to enlighten the minds, help us to do right, strengthen our faith. Angels of light and power are ever near us to protect us, to comfort, to heal, to instruct, to inspire. Truth about angels, page 19. These are their works. So divine love that secure us for eternity. God has not changed the ways and methods how he reached repentant sinners. His manifold wisdom in reaching out people are still the same. Divine teachers are still active today. Many have ignored them. God the Father to Jesus' word in the gospel speak until the end of time. So with Jesus through the Holy Spirit, the holy angels and all the spirit of prophecy from the Old and New Testament and beyond, this is the nature of divine love. God this thing, did these things in the, that, so that in the day of judgment, everyone has no excuse before him. Humans should not rely their power in knowing, understanding the truth. All agencies of God must be converged together since all instruments of the devil are equally working against God. Let us praise God for the privilege and the honor of divine teachers who are teaching, guiding, leading, instructing us so that we would not be lost our way going to heaven. Let us reaffirm our constant need. We need now more than ever human wisdom, understanding in reading, searching the scripture. And if we come to God's word with humble hearts, he will raise up the standard for us against lawless element. Selected Messages, Volume 2, 360. We need to lay, we need by faith, Things that pleases God. Hebrews 6, 11. Without faith, we cannot. It is impossible to please Him. So while it is not now, it was in the beginning. Listen. When man in his holiness and innocence had personal instruction for his maker, still man is not lived with divine teacher, with God provided is his representative, the Holy Spirit. Patrick and Prophets 19. See, Adam in his holiness and innocence, he has his instructor, his maker. So now man has not been lived by a divine teacher. He provided us his representative, the Holy Spirit, and the ministering holy angels are the ones who help us. I hope that we understand that we need more of human teacher than any time of the ending of history of this world. 
the need this time of the great controversy. Take it or leave it. It is your personal decision. Do not trust your own understanding that what Proverbs 3 is saying. Let us trust the Lord's teacher. The Lord himself, Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit, and the ministering holy angels from the throne of God. They are our unfailing teachers in understanding God's word. Let us not trust ourselves. Let us, when we read and understand, allow God to filter everything. What our teacher and instructors will tell us, let us reinvestigate, let us re-examine whether this is really the instruction, the words of truth, and the final way by which we walk. Let us love Praise and thanks God for all our divine teachers. And from this time on, start. Let us pray. Let us request. Let us pray every day that God would be our teacher. Jesus Christ, his word, his Holy Spirit, his angels, and all others, then we understand that our human teachers, God's unwritten books, nature, would contribute to the totality of understanding. And let us thank God that we have our divine teachers from this day on because we are in the most dangerous time of earth history. Let us reevaluate reinvestigate what we hear what we receive as a message of truth see to it that it is really the truth 100 percent because if it is not the truth then it is not from jesus christ i hope everyone follow the divine teacher this is my prayer thank you